So Casper's Vibe is typically a platform that um, enhances automotive transactions. Um, basically, an end user who basically interacts with our systems has it's an omni-channel platform. You can either go online or offline um, to access our platform. What we basically do is we provide people um, seamless uh, ability to buy, sell, uh, or trade in any vehicle, or actually access a lot of other automotive services. But largely, um, we are basically focused on uh, trading vehicles. So if you want to buy a car, if you want to sell a car, if you want to swap your car, we are the platform you come to. And you can access us either online or offline. So we're currently in about uh, eight cities you know it's a bit difficult to keep track of these days but uh, we're currently in about eight cities um, i think we are definitely on target to be up being about 15 by the end of um you know by the end of 2019 so we've we've, we've been very lucky with uh sort of the uh, people have been quite receptive about the service that we provide and i think that's largely due to the values that drive our business you know we're typically increasing the efficiency and um, productivity, productivity of people when making such a high value transaction. And I think, you know, the market has responded pretty well and um, it's driven us to basically be at a point where we are actually always driving to meet the demand of the customers because we get a lot of requests from around the country. So it's very important for us to actually be close to the customer as well. Okay, technology is at the base of everything that we do, um, externally and internally as well. So everything that basically involves the accurate data capture of sort of the issues that are around the car because really fundamentally at, at, at the backbone of our business, it's about providing customers with informed, um, with, with enough information to be able to make as close to uh, the best decision that they can make, you know. So really it's about the amount of information, the pictures, the details on the inspection report, every single thing that you need to see to be able to say, okay, this is a car that I would want to buy. And so if you also, if you want to sell a car as well, you want to be able to go and get a close to valuation as you can get. So even if you get a valuation, you come to one of our locations to inspect your car, you're still going to get a detailed report on, on the condition of your car. So wh whether you want to buy, whether you want to sell, it's all around really gathering data points. So there's a lot of um, initial observation that we apply, but then this feeds into our databases, you know, and then provides the consumer with enough information that they need. So technology is at the backbone of everything that we basically do to drive, you know, and enhance our, our, our customer experience. So basically, um, I mean, if it comes to vehicles, we have a car for everyone, um, you know, we're, you would find a car for as low as 200,000 naira and cars as, you know, as high as 20 million or 30 million naira. So we really don't have a baseline, right? As long as there's a customer segment, we basically don't have uh, any kind of segmentation. And aside from even trading vehicles, you can come in to just get a valuation of your car, come in to get an inspection report. We also have a lot of aftermarket services um, where, you know, we have recommended workshops that we, we, we also ask our customers to also visit. So there are a lot of things that we, we help our customers basically achieve by coming to our platform. So I think if you interact with us in one way or another, you will find one interaction point with our platform. Well, largely, a lot of people basically know us for primarily trading, buying or selling, um, or being able to trade in your cars. And our platform is basically one that even offers uh, a lot more than that. But regardless of where you are, regardless of what segment, you would always find an entry point. So I think our business is, is unique in a sense that it's largely uh, focused on um, enhancing a transaction or, or the process of a transaction regardless of what the situation is. Because if you're providing information, um, you're not necessarily, you know, what we're typically doing is regardless of what the condition is, we, we're, we're basically going into, to help people make better decisions. So I would say we're not particularly harshly uh, hit. There's, there's particularly not, not, not necessarily any policy that I would say is negative or positive. I think what we do need is more digitization. Because if there's more digitization on, um, on, on, on automotive information, so more ways to access, easier ways to access, more databases, more openly available, then it makes the process of what we're trying to do much more simpler. Um, so I would say the part, well, we're not particularly negatively affected by any policy, but I, we would like to see a lot more digitization, which I don't think is just limited to the automotive industry. I think, you know, there are countries where um, you know, everything you do in your life, you know, you can typically, and that just enhances the entire process. I think the same thing should be applied where there should be just a lot more digitization in terms of, you know, um, how you interact with the automotive services that you can. Financing, so traditionally in the automotive industry, 
um, financing has always been, you know, a big part of the of, of, of the automobile industry. So I'll give you a sense. Um, in China, for instance, it's about 38% of the vehicles are financed, and that's supposed to be a low rate. But if you look at that population of over a billion people, it's a huge number. Um, in the US, it's as much as 70%, and in some other Southeast Asian countries, it's as much as 90%. South Africa, for instance, is in upwards of 50%. Um, in Nigeria, it's lower than 1%. So that one shows you a sense that there is absolutely nothing being done in terms of making that deeper. But two, it also shows you opportunity available when the rest of the world kind of moves in that direction. Now, I think that um, some of the reasons why we've been gaining a lot of strides in, because we do actually, we have a lot of financial institution partners that we work with to provide consumer financing. And one of the challenges had always been post-valuation, which is a big issue in, in, in issuing loans um, for cars. It's basically, what's the depreciation of this asset going to be like? Um, you know, what's the disposal of this asset going to be like? And largely, we've been able to provide quick liquidity. So for who is issuing the loan, you can get quick li liquidity if there's in the, in, in the instance of the default. And also, you're able to post value, typically what the depreciation cycle of that vehicle will be like. A car is a depreciating asset, but a car is a necessity. Um, you know, it's like saying, I mean, you buy food, you're going to finish it at the end of the day, and you excrete. That's the, the end product, right? But it doesn't mean it, it actually adds value or, or, or is productive to your life cycle. So it gets you faster to where you want to go. In some cases, more convenient. So you're utilizing it. So it's not an asset that you buy and store, right? And I think that's the way it's, it should be referenced is basically at this point in time in life is getting an automobile going to increase your productivity so of course if you're getting in for the wrong reasons which is maybe about you know just looking good of course it's not advisable but if it's actually going to increase your increase your productivity get you to where you need to get to safer uh, quicker faster you can plan your life overall you should see an increased productivity in your life which should allow you pay off your loans accordingly right so um, I think it, it's, it's all about the concept. But of course, cars are very aspirational products and people tend to go for sometimes what they can't afford. It does, it, I mean, it's just like everything in life. Sometimes people will expand. It's, a phone is a very good example. It's a depreciating asset. You're not going to buy a phone today and sell it next year at a more expensive price. But some people basically would expand everything they have on a phone, you know, without really considering. But a phone is something, if you have a phone with a high processing capacity, it can increase your productivity and you do find some of the most wealthy people in the world basically looking using some of the simplest phones ever um, some people tend to misuse misjudge that as they don't need a high processing phone maybe they don't they don't need a high processing phone but probably their PAs or aides need a high processing phone and you know they are more productive just answering so I think looking at it from that perspective um, it's really around what that car is actually going to do for you and then making a very good decision around what your income levels are. But I think with every single thing, you must always be frugal and intelligent about how you make any decision. Pass45.com. Buy, sell, swap.